How's it going today, guys? Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the Anycubic Photon M3 Max and how to replace the Z-axis motor. I ran into an issue a couple months ago where I accidentally poured resin outside of the vat. Some of it got back into the Z-axis motor. Anycubic was nice enough to send me a brand new motor to replace the motor that I had broken. I attempted to purchase a third party motor, something of the exact same size and similar voltage. The problem is that while this third party motor did technically work while in the printer, I did end up having a couple print failures and eventually had to stop using it. This is mainly due to the fact that the third party motor that I had had a bit of a taller peg on the very top. The bearing that holds the screw head in place was sitting just outside of its enclosure, causing it to stop and get stuck. Anycubic was nice enough to send me a new Z-axis motor, and it seems like that's the only place you can get this specific stepper motor that they use for their Z-axis. I looked around as much as I could online and I could not find a Z-axis motor with these specs. Let's go ahead and dig in and go through the step-by-step -step process. So first I'm gonna go ahead and remove the covering. So now that the cover's been removed, let's go ahead and take off our build plate and our vat. Now that we've removed any unnecessary components, we're gonna go ahead and flip this around so we can get at the back side of the unit here. One other thing I'm gonna go ahead and do now is place a towel over the screen just to make sure the screen does not get damaged or too dirty. We actually only need to remove the bottom and top screws on either side here, as well as the middle. We do not need to remove these middle two screws on either side. Um, they actually just hold a metal bracket. You'll see what I mean when we get in there. There is a cord attached on the back side, and it just unplugs straight out of that white piece there. That is your controller for the auto feed system. The next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is pull this cord out from the actual motor itself. So now the motor has been disconnected. And what we wanna do is we wanna get at these screws that are inside these small two slits that are just above the motor. Uh, the problem is it's very difficult to stick anything into those slits to be able to actually get at the screws that are inside of here. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna remove these two screws. They're a bit longer than the ones that we've pulled out so far, but they're what holds this whole block in place. Let me go ahead and remove these screws. So now that we've removed the two screws here, we'll actually be able to lower this whole system, including the motor here. So if we actually grab hold and pull the whole system down, you'll see that our motor has also dropped. We now have better access to these two slits, and you should see two screw heads in your rightmost slit. Now we have removed the entire Z-axis and block system here. So there are actually screws in the top here to remove the block from the motor. Now again, my motor is gonna look different than your motor. Your motor will most likely look more like this. They are very similar in size and voltage, but this was a third party motor that I purchased in an attempt to remedy my motor issue before I learned that Anycubic's service team is kind enough to send you a new motor should yours ever break. You see we have our block now separated from our motor. We do have this little bit on the top here which also just slides right off. We'll set that aside for now. We now have 
these three separate pieces. Now, you can see here what I was talking about when it came to the uh, previous motor, third-party motor that I purchased, has a bit of a longer top piece. You can see it there very clearly. And that difference alone, I believe, is why this motor itself didn't work. Now, if I was a competent miller, perhaps I could have shaved down that top piece, but unfortunately I don't have access to the tools nor the experience to truly do that. So for now, I thank Anycubic for sending me their own motor. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning on these components and then we'll install the new motor. Make sure to remove the screws from your block so you don't lose them. So now that our components have been cleaned, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this little clamp piece here. I'm gonna place it directly on top of our motor and we're just gonna screw it right back in and tighten up that bottom nut. Leave the top one loose. Once your bottom nut has been tightened. We're going to rotate it and we're going to place our machined block back on top uh, so that the slits are facing the same side as our connector piece. And I'm going to go ahead and screw this in as well. Okay. We have our motor and the machined block now reassembled. And we can see that we can still have access to our two tightening screws. So I'm actually going to go ahead and raise our build plate so as to push this up and out of the way so we can reinsert our motor underneath. And now I'm pressing the motor into that slot. I now know that it's been inserted. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that top nut. So we're gonna line it up because we know that we're gonna to have to screw in these screws. So we're gonna go ahead and lift this back up. So we have our motor lifted back into place and now we can reset our screws at the top here. So our system has now been put back into place. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our cord here with the bracketed side facing up. Now that's been reset and we're pretty much done. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this back panel. So all of our screws have been replaced. Our back panel is where it needs to be. Now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test to make sure that our motor works. Let's go ahead and jump into tools, move Z axis motor 10 millimeters, and we're gonna hit up. And you can actually see the motor moving. And let's move down 10 millimeters. Okay, so re-leveling the build plate is super easy. We're just gonna grab our Anycubic leveling paper. And we're gonna place it over top the screen like so. And we're also gonna go ahead and take our largest hex and just loosen the build plate. Okay, so once your build plate is loose, go to tools move Z, so I'm going to say home, so I'm going to home the build plate, and it's going to send the build plate down onto the leveling paper. So now I'm going to gently press on the build plate and screw in all four screws.
once our build plate has been tightened, we're going to set z equals zero, enter, enter, and it's going to raise back up. At this point, it is safe to remove your leveling paper, and I like to store mine back in its original bag to ensure that it is nice and clean. Okay, so we now have our printer fully reassembled and we're ready to do a print. I wanna do a test print before I call this printer ready for production. So part of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fill up this vat with this translucent green from AnyCubic. Um, it's just their standard basic resin, but with a really cool transparent green, I've actually been able to get some really fine detail with this resin in particular and has some pretty cool looks to it. Well, I think that's gonna conclude it for this video today, guys. Make sure to leave a like, uh, subscribe, because I'm planning to do a lot more videos like this. And I feel like this is a pretty simple and easy mistake for people to make. And it's definitely doable at home if you have the tools for it, especially because Anycubic provides you with the properly sized Allen wrenches, and they're nice enough to replace the motor should you need it. And it's a lot easier than sending off your whole printer, especially with a printer of this size. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If there's anything else you need to know or would like to see about this printer, feel free to leave a comment and I'll catch you guys in the next one.